Of all the original Space Marine Legions, the Dwarven Guard are some of my favorite. They are experts in infiltration, striking from the shadows with cunning attacks. In this video, I am going to paint a Raven Guard intercessor in a clean, if metal ish style. I will also show you how I freehand painted the heraldry and squad markings. Not only because freehand painting truly really makes your minis unique, but also because we don't have chapter specific decals. Let's get started. I crafted a dynamic base with a piece of slate stone and used a small brass tube to strongly secure the miniature to it. The base and the miniature were both primed with two thin layers of Vario Ghost Grey surface primer. To get a smooth surface, I am using an airbrush thinner and a flow improver. Next, I painted everything with Vario Black. Wait a minute, why not starting with a black primer in the first place? Well, for no good reason other than we didn't have one. And I would need to spray a layer of Vario Black over it anyway to make it easy to correct inevitable mistakes. And while I am using an airbrush here, you can achieve a similar finish with a brush and a few very thin layers. The airbrush just makes it a lot faster and smoother. Onto the first layer of edge highlights, for which I mixed a touch of AK Ivory with the same Vario Black that I used for the armor. As you can see, I am using a pretty large brush here to debunk the idea that you absolutely need a very small brush to paint thin lines and small details. This is a size 2 Da Vinci Maestro Series 35 and the large body and thin tip makes it a very stable and versatile brush. Such a large body can also hold a lot of paint and allows me to work on the mini for a long time before having to refill my brush. I am painting those highlights using the very tip of the brush, making sure to apply little pressure on the hair and keeping the paint thinned down enough to smoothly flow off the tip. I would recommend that you experiment with thinning down your paint until you achieve a consistency that is smooth but not runny, and to try a few thin lines on your thumb, for example, before painting the mini. For that first pass of highlights, I went for a rather bright shade of grey, but you could start with a darker shade and larger lines for a more subtle look. I will explain in a moment why I went for a higher contrast on this mini. Some of the most exposed surfaces, like the neck guard or the top of the knee pads, were also highlighted with the same shade. The first level of edge highlight on the body is now complete. And with that high contrast, you could very well keep it like this for a more economical but still very neat look. Next, I painted the same edge highlights on the helmet. And I realized now that I switched to a size 1 brush out of habit. I have to admit that keeping such a small element properly framed and in focus while recording made it particularly difficult to paint clean edges. This is a major trade-off that painters have to accept when painting for a video, but it is also showing that you can refine those lines with the base color and achieve thin edges even without the greatest brush control. You might have noticed that I am constantly switching between the tip and the side of the tip of the brush. This is because painting some of those razor thin edges is much easier when delicately brushing those edges with the side of the brush. Take your time when painting heads, as it is one major point of focus, and it is worth giving it a bit more attention. With that first phase of edge highlights complete, let's start phase 2 with the Aquila by raising the ratio of ivory for viral black. This is a minimalistic and efficient color scheme, as most of the mini will actually be painted with various ratios of those two colors. I am using the exact same mix to paint the second level of edge highlights, but this time only for the edges that are the most exposed. If when painting edge highlights you tend to apply too much pressure and finish with thick lines, start by practicing the motion right above the edge that you want to highlight, and slowly get closer with your brush until you barely touch the edge. This will give you greater control and reduce the amount of paint that you actually apply on the mini. And with a bit of practice, you will be able to make those edges look really neat and sharp. The 
the second phase of highlights on the body is done. And as previously, you don't have to go compulsive on those details when scaling this up to a full army. Focus on just a few edges that are particularly catching your attention. And you'll be happy with miniatures that will look great on the tabletop while only taking a fraction of the time to paint. I used a mix of wine red and deep red for the purity seal and painted all the metallic parts with Canoptech alloy and a touch of Vario black to make it a little darker. Hey, look at the small details that no one will actually see. You have a lot of options when it comes to choose a paint for your metallics, like Citadel Lead Belcher or Vario Airbrush Metal Colors for example. I personally prefer using Vario Airbrush Metallics for their smooth texture and good coverage. But Canoptech Alloy has a pretty interesting shade and I enjoy using it. I added a few face two highlights on the helmet and started painting the lenses with a mix of wine red and deep red. Followed by a thin layer of deep red to make the lenses pop. Next, I use ivory to paint a few reflections on the lenses. And honestly, not easiest when recording for a video and trying to keep the helmet centered and in focus. And as for the rest of the armor, the metallic parts of the helmet were painted with the same mix of Canoptech alloy and Vio black. What do you think? It might not be heavy metal team paint level, but we're not trying to win a competition here. We want to take a short time to thank everyone who joined our channel. You folks are amazing and we truly appreciate all those kind comments. And if you haven't subscribed already, feel free to do whatever you want. Now let's get back to the mini to paint all the laser beads with two layers of black red mixed to Sahara yellow and a touch of black. And for the first edge highlights, I am simply adding extra Sahara yellow to the previous mix. I experimented with adding a bit of green hue to those highlights because why not? It is fun to try new ways to paint or scrub your minis. I then added ivory to the same mix to paint thinner highlights and texture. And for the brightest edges, mostly ivory with just a touch of the previous mix. And I will blend all this later in the video by adding a brown glaze over the leather. onto the left shoulder pad with a few layers of wine red over the edges. And as always, my paint is very diluted, as I like to apply a few very thin layers to achieve a smooth finish. Next, I layered over a few exposed areas a thin mix of wine and deep red. And then further highlighted the shoulder pad by adding ivory to the wine and deep red mix. For the brightest edges, I added extra ivory to the same mix. And, to blend everything nicely together, I glazed a transparent mix of wine and deep red. I then applied the exact same process for the bolter rifle. Canoptech alloy mixed to Vario black for the metallic parts. And just Canoptech alloy to highlight all those raised elements. Same as for the left shoulder pad, I used a mix of wine and deep red to highlight the weapon and added ivory to the mix to paint those edge highlights. All right, this looks pretty clean. I painted the cross on the left arm the same way as the Aquila on the plastron. A mix of Vario Black with increasing amount of ivory over a few layers. Then, I painted all the metallic bits on the chain sword and the rest of the armor using the same recipe as for all the previous parts. After all this edge highlighting, why not take a little break with something a bit more creative? I decided to freehand a raven skull over the left shoulder pad, so I started by sketching the overall shape of the skull, roughly blocking the main features with a mix of ivory and vio black in very thin layers. I switched to a shorter brush for smaller, more precise strokes, and used the background color to refine the shape of the skull from the outside. 
it is mostly a matter of keeping your paint as thin as possible so you can walk on your free hand without building unwanted brush strokes or thickness. At this stage, I am further refining the Raven's Coal by highlighting a few areas. I finished by a quick cleanup with Vario Black and added a dark grey edge all around the skull to give it extra depth. With all that space left around the skull, I decided to add a little memento to the 19th Legion. Roman numbers are a pretty fitting addition to a Space Marine armor and are great to practice your freehand skills. Overall, I think that this is looking quite good and didn't take too much work. For the right drone, a simpler square marking would be enough. Again, this is the kind of freehand that is great to practice your brush control without the stress of painting a complex design. I then painted the highlights on the shoulder pad using the same recipe as for the armor and kept it very subtle as I didn't want the shoulder pad to catch too much attention. This actually took me way less time than all the first that goes around applying decals. And more importantly, that gave me the satisfaction to have created something unique. I decided to add some weathering to the armor using the same recipe as for the edge highlights. Again, this Raven Guard color scheme is very simple and most of it has been done with only black and ivory. When weathering, you usually paint those first scratches with a darker tone than your base color, like brown for yellow armor. But for this black suit, I started with dark grey, to make it look as if the damage is revealing the grey ceramite underneath. I then painted brighter subtle highlights by adding a touch of ivory to the prize grey. It might be a little difficult at times to resist the impulse to go a little too crazy on this brethren. As is often the case, less might be better, and I feel that I am here at the limit of the damn, you went too far. But this is a matter of personal taste, and you might like your miniatures caked in battle damage. As it is a major element of focus, I am paying a little more attention to how I weather the helmet. This is also the occasion to highlight the Aquila with that same color, keeping it very subtle as I'll be adding brighter highlights later on. You actually don't need to use white to make something read as such, and you will have a lot more flexibility painting with a bright gray instead. Back to the shoulder pad for some battle damage. I'm using a mix of wine red, deep red, and ivory. Usually, I would have started with a darker shade of red, but I went quite minimal on that one. Not everything has to be overly complex or take three or more steps. Same for the bolter rifle, which follows the same recipe as for the left shoulder pad. That's it for the weathering, and I only have a few elements left to paint on the armor. I am painting the various cables on the leg and arms in red and green, and a few metallic bits that were left unpainted. The last phase of highlights is completely optional and could absolutely be skipped to speed up your painting output. I am using pure ivory on a very few select elements and edges, and even there, this is very subtle and only serves to give a bit of extra punch to your miniatures. I'm glazing over the little bits with her red to help blending the texture, making it pull in a few places where I want the leather to be darker. And finally, a few details on the right forearm with green and red. And here's the result once those elements have been highlighted. This intercessor is complete, and the only thing left for him is to paint a base worthy of such a dynamic pose. 
I am applying a layer of hull red over the whole base. And while I have a rough feeling of the color I want, I am experimenting on the spot with a layer of deep orange and hull red. This is not it yet, so I am adding Sahara yellow to the Prus mix. This color is interesting, but now it is missing a bit of a red undertone. I added wine red to the Prus mix to give the base color a terracotta look. I can now go back to the Hur Red, Deep Orange and Sahara Yellow mix that I'm dry brushing all over the base. Then I mixed in some ice yellow to give rocks and ground brighter highlights, while avoiding those flat faces. Alright, the base now looks way more interesting. Onto the Necron's head with Canoptic Alloy mixed to black for the metallic parts. I then use her red to paint the head, and as I want to build the color up to a deeper yellow, I am mixing in an increasing amount of Sahara yellow over the few layers. This will let me start mixing in deep yellow while keeping a rich undertone. This is the moment when my camera ran out of storage and stopped recording just when I was layering up to a deep yellow. So fast forward to that nice yellow head on which I am painting a few highlights using ice yellow. Yellow for the head was a bit daring, but I like it. Let's finish this with a few final bits. Cleaning up the base rim, adding a few bright highlights to the rock with ice yellow, and a wash of hull red to lightly shade those recesses. With that, the base is complete, and it's time to enjoy the finished miniature. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!